If you're going to Kinosaki to stay in a ryokan or visit the bathhouses, the seaside is only nine minutes away on the train at Takino. Today we're taking a little trip to the beach, walking around the peninsula. It's very picturesque and you won't believe how clear the water is. It's definitely off the beaten track. And at the end, there's a very cute cafe in Kinosaki for a bite to eat that I still dream about. For more about Kinosaki, take a look at my previous videos. There's one about the town and what there is to do there, and one about the ryokan I stayed at. And make sure you're subscribed for new Japan videos on Thursdays. Here's our train to the seaside. We're going to Takino, which is just one station along from Kinosaki. It should take about 10 minutes on the train. And it's such a lovely day to be enjoying the seaside. It's really warm today. Just like the train to Kinosaki, the train journey to the seaside is very picturesque, past fields and houses. And just listen to the sound of this old train going along the track. There's another train coming like the one we took. Takino Station, we're really in the countryside now. Here's the outside of Takino Station. It looks like a lovely, peaceful place. And there's a massive sign here showing the route to the beach. It should be about a kilometer's walk, just over a kilometer. It should take about 20 minutes. There's a sign to the beach this way. We've got manhole covers for the beach, the big ship, and it's over here on the ground as well. It's so quiet. I'm sure it's different in the summer when more people come here. It's midday on a Wednesday and there's hardly anyone on this street. Deserted. Takino is a very quiet little town. It gives you a chance to see quiet streets and daily life in Japan. So you can get to the beach straight on from on the main route or take the riverside route which is a bit longer. We're going to go for the riverside route. There's some creatures over on the other side of the river. Can you see? There's a crab a whale and an octopus, a frog. Walking along by the river we've seen people's allotments, people's houses and things you wouldn't normally see in touristy areas. I can't believe how quiet it is. We're just crossing the river. Look at all the mountains in the background. It always seems so unusual to me because we don't have them at home. Well there are mountains but I don't live near them. Look at this cute little alleyway off to the side. All directions lead to crabs. And we've made it to the sea. I bet this is really busy in the summer. It's supposed to be one of Japan's top 100 beaches. I don't know if it's always like this in Takano. This was at the start of March. I expect there'd be more people there in the summer or during the holidays, but it definitely seems like somewhere to escape the crowds. This is the Nekozaki Peninsula. The name means crouching cat. It's supposed to look like a cat crouching down. And sometimes it's also called QP because it looks like a Cupid doll laying down, like the Japanese Cupid mayo. In the summer, you can go swimming and there's sea kayaking to a place called Monster Cave. You can also hire bikes from only 500 yen for two hours. If you have more time, you can hike up Mount Jajayama. It only takes about 15 minutes for a view of the peninsula and the beach. You can go hiking along the Nekozaki Peninsula. We'll be walking along the start in a minute. So you hear so much online about crazy Japan and everyone thinks Tokyo is Japan, but there's so much more around the country that's completely different. This is nothing like Shibuya Crossing and Shinjuku and all of that. This really feels like a little town where people live and just go about their quiet everyday lives. I'm sure it's a different story in summer though when everyone comes here. It's a swimming beach so it must be a nice place to cool off. It's always nice to be at the seaside. As we were so close to it in Kinosaki, it felt like achieving some sort of goal to make it all the way across the country and touch the Sea of Japan. Look how clear the water is, I can't believe it. It's nice for a swim. Let's enjoy the calming sound of the waves for a moment. It looks just like a swimming pool. This is how I think a tropical beach would look. Not that I've ever been from. Last time we were on a beach in Japan, it was snowing. That was so different. Is it cold, Phil? It's a lot colder than the onsen. <laughs> I said I wanted to go for a swim, but I'm glad I'm not doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many people around. <laughs> go on. <laughs> really, really you need cold. to acclimatise. 
It's the kind of cold where it kind of hurts. It's kind oh of... really? It didn't feel that bad with your hands? No, I'm not good with cold water. <laughs> but that is really cold. <laughs> you would hate it. <laughs> There's a ridge down there. You have to make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the reasons the sea might be so cold is because just before we travelled out to Japan about three weeks ago, this was covered in snow. I saw the pictures on Instagram. It's so different now. It's a really warm day. The sun is actually quite warm, but the water's still cold. You can try it out for yourself and find out, Ames. I'll take your word for it. I'm no, fine. Come on in. <laughs> We've got the whole beach pretty much to ourselves. There's hardly anyone else here. The sand's really soft as well, really soft and sandy. I think it's the hottest day of the year so far in Japan. Today it's 19 degrees centigrade. It's lovely and sunny and warm and there's hardly a cloud in the sky. It's so nice. It was warmer than I expected at the start of March. Even though it's not really that warm, it felt like it was to us coming from winter in the UK where it's so much colder at that time of year. I thought there'd be more around here. I thought maybe we could get some ice cream or there'd be some places to get snacks, but there doesn't seem to be a lot or at least not a lot open this time of year. During the summer, there's a monthly market at the beach and I did get my ice cream in the end from a vending machine at the station. There's a hotel here at the end of the beach, right by the Nekazaki Peninsula with all sea views. There's another section of the harbour over this side and Katakana practice. The sign says toilet, toilets. These buildings in the harbour are so picturesque. They just look so Japanese. It's the shape of them, the chunky roof tiles and colours and all these hazy mountains in the background as well. This would be such a great place if you're into photography. The dark wood on the buildings is from a traditional technique called yakisugi, where the wood is charred to make it resistant to the salt water and the sun. It's all part of the local look of Takino. We've crossed over to the other side of the Neko... What is it called? Neko... I just remember the cat part. <laughs> the other side of the peninsula. And the sea isn't quite so calm on this side, but it still looks very clear and blue. Here's the start of the walk along the peninsula, which they say is like walking in my neighbour Totoro. The whole place has Studio Ghibli vibes. The quaint local train station, the quiet streets in a sleepy town, and the mysterious walking paths on the peninsula, surrounded by trees. The whole trail along the Nekozaki Peninsula takes two hours for a round trip. On the way, you can see giant's kettles. They're fossilised footprints from prehistoric deer and elephants. Down there you can see just how clear the sea is. You can see everything underwater. The path started getting steep and we're not up for a big hike today. So I think we're just going to do a little walk and then turn back. If you carry on the trail, there are hiking trails all the way down the peninsula and you can see a lighthouse. We carried on anyway, just in case we were missing out on a view of the lighthouse. It's not very long, but it was quite steep in places. <sighs> the lighthouse is a kilometre that way. Let's see if we can see it from the edge. Okay, here's a map. We are here and the lighthouse is all the way at the end. And if you have to go over that, might be a bit of a climb ahead. We're not going to do the whole hike today because we've got a train to catch to Kyoto later on. So we're going to head back now. And there's a lovely view of the beach and the town. One of Japan's top 100 beaches. There's 99 better beaches. Yeah, I mean, it's they would have said top 75 if it was in the top 75. Japan's 99th best beach. Disappointingly, it's actually just a selection of the top 100, not in any order. So this could be one of the best ones. They leave it up to you to decide. There are many other top 100s, including the hometown onigiri rice ball top 100, the top 100 famous mountain passes, top 100 sunsets, flower mountains, and 100 local train lines through nice landscapes. If you want to see them, they're on j100s.com slash en slash. We're taking a different route back to the station through these quiet streets. It still looks really picturesque. There's a battery vending machine. It looks really old, <laughs> a bit rusty. This really looks like the countryside. Just on the way back to the station, we spotted these fields alongside the road. It's right by the river there. 
I'd recommend checking the train times carefully. At times they are every 20 minutes, but they're not always that regular. We just missed one, so we took a walk on a path through these fields that were right next to the station. It felt so much like the countryside, more than most places I've been in Japan. It's back to Kinasaki for something to eat before catching the train to Kyoto. We stopped off at this cute cafe opposite the station. It was decorated with so many little bits and pieces, really homely and charming. I've got the pancake set with some juice and Pierre's got the toast set with some juice. I wasn't expecting the toast to come with some fruit salad and jam. Lovely. Ooh. This is such a cute cafe. This may not look like much, but Japanese bread, shokupan, is so soft and fluffy. Now, I am generally a big toast fan, and this was so good. I hope you enjoyed this little trip to the beach with us. It's such an easy trip to make if you're in Kinasaki. Check out my other Kinasaki videos. I really did enjoy it there so much. It might look like it's a long way away, but you can easily get there on a direct train from Osaka or Kyoto. And the journey goes so quickly with all that scenery to look at. I've got lots more Japan videos for you. So I'll see you soon on Thursday.